Let's talk about the, the real figures. So, mm. so about 1.2 million annually is, mm. is what uh, Jubilee promised when it came into power. And uh, that's a figure that has never been hit. Um, mm. You know, you, you've been looking at the, on the higher side of it, between 850,000 or so, mm. yeah? Um, so what happened? What went wrong? I think this should be also explained by the various environment we globally we find ourselves in. So even if there are organizations that may be uh, closing up and living and uh, job losses, I think it's not just peculiar to Kenya. It's the kind of the environment that we find for reasons maybe where these companies come from. Mm -hmm. That for one, because we are living in a very rapidly changing environment, could necessitate that. But I believe. So, what kind of challenges are you saying that you know have impacted either investors moving out of the country or even local companies shutting down? Uh, some of the investors could find that if they are not making good profits, that they can be able to sustain their organizations. They are likely maybe to think of shifting to to somewhere else. But as many are also shifting, the others which are coming. So much as we there are job losses. Um, because of the environment changes. We have seen some banks, maybe because of automation and the leveraging on ICT. Initially, it might look like the jobs are lost. But at the long term, I believe with the advances uh, of ICT, with improved infrastructure, and with improved ease of doing business, jobs are going to be there in the, maybe in the next one year or so. So for the youth, they should not feel like uh, they are deserted by the government because there are very many interventions that the government has done. For example, mm -hmm. TVET, mm -hmm. Technical Vocation Education, is already targeting almost a half of the people who are graduating out of secondary school and also the university so that they can have skills. Because we must ask ourselves also, why are youth not having jobs? And but if you could pedal back, mm -hmm. because you've talked about uh, the, the impact of uh, mechanization and technology, mm -hmm. is it then not the case that mm -hmm. more and more jobs will become, you know, redundant? The jobs we did two years ago are not exactly the same job we mm -hmm. did now. Mm -hmm. So the youth and uh, everybody with a job, we cannot just sit back and uh, hope the competencies, the skills we had in the last two years or so will take us to the future job. Some people might be prepared to lose a job, it's painful, but we must ask ourselves, how do we rescale ourselves? How do we learn and learn and be able to position ourselves to take up the jobs that are going to open up? Your ministry mm -hmm. is uh, in charge of various, uh, if you like, affirmative mm -hmm. uh, action funds, um, and I want to talk about the youth fund in particular. Is there any evidence that the youth fund has succeeded, has created mm -hmm the kind of employment that you were envisaging? Since inception, the youth fund has been able to distribute close to 14 billion to about 2,000 youth. It has a very clear criteria of how you apply for it, and it is giving a loan between 100,000 to something like an individual even to 1.5. So I think there is a success story that uh, those who have been able to be funded they have already been able to, our research shows that about 75% of those who have been funded, they have been able to grow in the sense of turnover. They have also been able to grow in sense of employing more people. And uh, their loan repayment is at 80% going to 90%. Those are indicators that you cannot pay a loan if you are not generating some. Yeah, the some returns. Briefly, as we conclude, uh, given that most youth are in the informal sector, what is the government doing specifically to enhance uh, their productivity? Uh, I think we all, as Kenyans, we need to recognize where our jobs found. When you look at the government employees, around the only 700 people, including discipline forces, and uh, there is almost 18 million Kenyans who work. Mm -hmm. Most of them are found in the private sector and also in the uh, informal sector. You may have mentioned that you are in these smaller uh, SMEs, but I think it is at that SMEs we should actually be uh, acknowledged and being grateful that at least they have a starting point on the small businesses. And these youth, they grow, and then they're able to get access for more funds, more markets in the bigger bank, in the bigger uh, banks, and then they are able to, to grow and, uh, and become organizations that can hire other people also even can, can be able to sell. Well, here's another thing the president has been talking about, you know, yeah. the jobs for youth and mm. then 
after that, what follows is the appointment of people in their 60s and 70s and uh, that sort of thing. I mean, is, is that not really the, the evidence of the betrayal that young people feel, that including in public appointments, and of course this is part of your, your preserve, mm. that we are seeing jobs that can be done by brilliant young minds being given to people for whom even, uh, you know, what one would, in some cases, one would argue that when they were in their prime, mm -hmm. did not perform, um, you know, either in previous government ministries or otherwise. Well, how, how, why does the government feel and why is the president apparently comfortable continuously giving jobs to older folk and leaving out young people who are qualified? Let me say that uh, mm. if you appoint a 25 to go and chair and board, I think they also feel some inadequacies because they need some experience having sat in the board before so that they can also be able to learn. Right now, I think the, the, the in the parastatals there could be over 50 young, those who are 35 and below, who are already in these boards. I'm hoping with the time these ones now, when they have earned this experience, in the future they will be able to become like these senior citizen who have vast experience. Again, this is not a full-time job. It only pays sitting allowance. I don't think a young person wants just to have that kind. That is not like a job they would aspire to have and they would give them livelihood. Because it's a job that pays so little a sitting, a sitting allowance. They only meet quarterly, that is four times a year. So these jobs, I think Kenyans, we must not be confused. Is it young versus the old, or it is women versus, <laughs> versus no. uh, men. It is just what value do you bring on the table at that particular time. If mm. I read the, the public mood correctly, mm. is, is, is that uh, the, for instance, the appointment of uh, uh, Mary Wamboy, which mm. has since been uh, suspended mm. uh, owing to the, um, the move by the, uh, the Senate of uh, Nairobi, mm. that that was particularly offensive because this is the employment board, right? And you have young people constantly, in, in the last year at least, crying out that they are not being employed. And you're talking about the value that somebody brings to that position. Is it, was there some specific, unique value, skill, mm. qualification that she was bringing to chair the board? Mm. And even if it meets four times a year, mm. I mean, this is a, a critical oversight uh, organ that will determine um, you know, the way in which uh, government will, will run such affairs. So mm. it's, it's certainly not a, a small task either. Yeah, yeah. So but, but what but was her value proposition, for instance? And I did not even take it very kindly that Mary Waboy was being dragged into kind of conversation that she's not qualified. One, I saw gender issues there. If it was a man, nobody would be talking. Two, I think Mary, we did not give her a chance. Because in a board, you are not supposed to be making decisions alone. You make decisions a total sum of the scale mix on the table. So we did not give Mary that opportunity to, 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 to lead this board. because. Leading at the board is more of leadership uh, strategic at a strategic level, policy level, and I don't think if we had given her an opportunity, she would have delivered. But since it has now been kind of surrounded with negativity, she may consider something different. But as I, uh, particularly our ministry was offended by her being picked. There are many men who have been, who have been given that job, older than her, but nobody has said anything. But on this one, I think it's being a bit personal, mm -hmm. and I think my ministry is going to take it up. But I think it was with good intention, good faith, but now the way it has gone, it looks untidy. So I think we should be able to support her. But I know it's actually the president is committed. You remember us, we had youth people in this youth fund of mine who are given position and they did not run it well. Mm -hmm. I think the president doesn't get feedback from that. that Yes, here are the young people. I've given them the job as much as they wished, but it has not gone very well. 